markets and everything else. Hey, guys. We sure are, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Brenberg. I'm Jackie DeAngelis. I'm Taylor Riggs. Welcome to the Big Money Show. So appreciate your time today. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. I'm just going to read it to you. Since his first day in office, President Biden has called on Congress to secure our border and address our broken immigration system. Over the past three years, while Congress has failed to act, <laughs> the president has acted to secure our border. Mm. How has he acted when the message has been the border's open? Come here. I'm going to use the number on record that we used in the introduction. More than five million migrants are in this mm. country, and and the estimates could be that it's much more than that. Well, so, and his message was. I can't do anything about it. I'm the president. And I but he could have done a lot about it. And his executive action shows that executive action and executive order actually works the way President Trump used them. But his order is so ineffective and comes so mm. late in his presidency after the damage has been done that he's just created a massive problem here. And what we're talking, so 2,500 yeah. people can come into the country every day, no questions asked, illegally. Um, and then they'll start to say, well, we'll shut it down. And, 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 you know, it's like, how did you get to 2,500? Do you know what? it is it's the six foot distancing of border policy it means nothing it has no basis in reality it's made up it sounds slightly better than what we actually have right now but at the end of the day how in the world is it going to work are they going to like build a big fence and it's going to come down once we get to 20 i mean nobody talks through I the details it's all in this dumb press release but it has no basis in reality and that's why the polls are what they are right because people don't yes. trust that, that the numbers are real. That yeah. they, they don't trust that what is going to be happening from a policy perspective yeah. will translate into change in our communities. Right. And I think that's why people say, we still don't trust you. Yeah. Well, because in the first line of his press release, he lies. <laughs> So, that's one reason they don't trust him. That's one good reason. That's a good reason. Maybe I was putting it too nicely there. Let's stick uh, with some of the... want to ban him from our platform. The only caveat, he does have securities trading licenses. And so that makes him not just the little guy who's sticking mm. it to the man, but makes him a licensed professional. And that is where E-Trade might have a little thing of saying... Trade. If E-Trade steps in and just let him do his thing, and let's say he is a pump and dump guy. If he pumps and dumps, then all the people following him get hurt and he's the one who takes the hit. So if I'm E-Trade, let him and the army of Roaring Kitties do their thing and rise or fall based on what he says. But why get in the way of that? Well, there's a couple of nuances here I want to point out. First of all, E-Trade is owned by Morgan Stanley. So right. ultimately, yeah. Morgan Stanley would be on the hook for this as either you know taking him off the platform, and they don't really mm. know which way they want to go with respect to the PR on that, or letting him run, you know, do what he's doing if it's technically legal, even if people get hurt. So Taylor, you brought up something about his background, which I thought was interesting in the Wall Street Journal article. Um, he's got these securities industry licenses he was a broker, a uh, mm -hmm. registered broker with Mass Mutual Life Insurance. Mass Mutual agreed to pay, this is all according to the journal, agreed to pay $4 million in fines in 2021 to settle inquiries by state regulators for failing to supervise Gill's social media and trading activity. So right now, there's an inquiry right now separately with the Massachusetts Securities Division that's happening, you know, given what we're seeing at this mm. moment. So ultimately, the question here is, is what he's doing violating insider trading laws, securities, SEC laws? If he's not, you got to leave him alone. I don't know the and answer to that. Is it E-Trade's problem or is it left stuff? Listen, if he is still <laughs> licensed as a licensed representative, he is... He's got to go about it, though, by the book. I'm not sure it needs to be up to E-Trade to say, we're going to remove you from mm. the platform because then it would look like they're they're just arbitrarily choosing who lives and who dies. Right, but remember, and I work, we're a self-clearing uh, broker dealer. It's a tricky... Like, there's freedom to operate and trade, but once you come under the umbrella of regulation, you right. give up some of those freedoms. I knew you'd be best to talk about I this. I like this battle. It's like a regulatory <laughs> legal battle going on right here. I just I want some popcorn. We should have brought popcorn. Um, a lot going on in the market today, and we keep yeah. talking about the tech stocks and the rally that it continues to be underway and asking, you know, how much higher can we go? But I want to flip that question on its on its side. Um, there is upside potential here long term for sure. But what he's out of touch with the everyday person. I mean, really, oh. we want a recession over. No, inflation is the thief that robs us. We need a downturn, a cooling. Why?
why else was the Fed raising rates, mm -hmm. right? We need to rein in these prices. We need to rein in inflation. It's not that the prices are slowing down. It's just the rise in prices is slowing down. We haven't seen a reversal. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the, at the, at, when right. you're balancing your finances, your expenses keep going up. Homeowners insurance, car insurance, health insurance. Yes. Where does it stop? It has to stop somewhere. Lou, love having you on the show. Always a Thank you. Good stuff. Thank you're you. welcome back anytime. Meanwhile, Mixed reality is what they call it. That's what the cool kids are calling it, Boomer. I just got called a boomer. That happens like once a week, Lou, just so you know. Yeah, okay, we'll see how mixed reality works for Microsoft. We've learned a lot since the coronavirus pandemic, but the biggest... ...been by the Biden administration. If they want to call themselves public servants, they can start by first and foremost serving the public. Congressman Absolutely. Ronnie Jackson, got to leave it there. Good to see you. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Welcome back. Let's get a quick check on your money. Stocks, as you can see, mostly to the downside with the S&P and the NASDAQ lower. Really some growth concerns as we continue a sluggish start to June. We'll continue to get you updated reads on some of the economic data that shows some cracks. Let's take a look at oil. Oil prices, they were sliding earlier and that continues. This is after OPEC Plus said that they will extend production cuts into 2025, but they're starting to maybe begin unwinding the additional voluntary reductions later this year. Crude earlier was at a about a four month low, so sliding a little bit to the downside. Right, still stuck in the world where OPEC controls everything. I'd like to get out of that world. Mm, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, many Americans are making doing and nobody will know. Edward, good report. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thanks. All right, take a look at this. New candidates with a track record. It's usually an uh -huh. incumbent versus 20%, uh, 21% in three years. So if you like that, you're going to vote for President Biden again. If you like an open border, you're going to you know, vote for him again. And of course, the border has economic implications too. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, people think back to the way it was. In your words, right? I think it is interesting, Brian, that um, there's another study. And I feel like I'm part of that, right? Where my parents were able to do better than their parents. Right. I feel like I'm that first generation where I don't know. Uh, voters without a college degree, uh, Biden's support among that group has dropped 10 points in 2024. Can. It's going to be a hot election season. Yep. That's all I have to say. Meantime, former President Trump. <laughs> Meanwhile, a new type of got a little bit more of an adventurous spirit. I know Jackie's not going. I'm not going to tell you that <laughs> right now. But it's it's fascinating stuff. We love to watch the video. We wish you well and I hope you have some really interesting fun experiences chasing twisters. Thanks, Nick. Safety Thank first. Thank you so much for having me, guys. May not go, but I think I'm sold. I'm just going to out you to our audience. She's the only one of the three of us that has actually done a skydiving mm -hmm. expedition. It yes. was incredible. So that says a lot. One of these days, safety first, we're getting you out there. I don't I don't think so. I'd like this show to last a while. I'd like everyone to make it, you know, for the next <laughs> you episode. You can. The odds of survival are very high. Higher if you don't do it, though. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. We'll see. Uh, meanwhile, interesting story. I originally wasn't sure how I fell down mm. on this. I don't like government telling me what to do with my phone or my social media. Mm. But in this case, Brian, and I'll come to you because I know that you're a parent and we're sort of thinking about this the same way. If the government doesn't get involved, I know that it did, so maybe this is the right choice. If parents can't be responsible, maybe government has to get involved. I don't trust this as much better. I mean, to me, it doesn't solve the problem. It maybe makes it a little bit less bad than it's it is. It's more addictive once they start putting more content because yeah. you just go, oh, I think this could be positive. Okay. Let's get to this. Text, don't call. Mm. I like this story. And is if you leave me a voicemail. If you leave me a voicemail, I'm not going to listen to it. I won't know what you wanted. Uh -oh. Don't leave voicemails. Text me what you wanted instead. Is that why you okay. never return my voicemails? <laughs> Yes. I now find out why I never get it. I don't even listen to them. <laughs> I'm going to out our producer. I was in the car with him yesterday. Don't text her. But maybe I'm just super, super old. Maybe I'm the boomer, Brian. No, but but back in the day, if you wanted to ask her on the date, you'd have to call her home phone. And talk to her parents. And her parents would answer, First. and you'd be like, you know, hello, Mr. Hipkins. Uh, that, but like that was good, though. It's good to have to call the mm -hmm. parents. It's like that gatekeeper we need. Are you going to call Jackie? Jackie. Just don't leave me a voicemail. <laughs> don't leave Jackie voicemail. And if you call her and it's a number she doesn't recognize, you won't answer it. Probably anyways. not. Definitely not. I'll text you. Fine. I'll text Quickly, you. Quickly, let's count you. Survey rolled over. Markets are trying to punch up. I like that.
I know a guy that throws a good punch. Charles Payne. He's here right now. He's making money. Hey, put me down for one of those tornado things, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right, folks. Good afternoon.